I'm here at VITU in Geneva, and I'm very pleased to be joined by Stephen Trowbridge, Chairman of Study Group 15 on Transport and Access. Stephen, welcome, and thank you very much indeed for joining us here today. Thank you, Fred. I'm happy to be here. So I wonder if you could explain to our viewers um, a little bit about Study Group 15 and how we might see uh, your work at play in our daily lives. Well, Study Group 15 is responsible for uh, networks, uh, transport, and infrastructure uh, with respect to, to transport networks, with respect to access networks, and with respect to home networks. And so for a wide variety of applications, uh, we carry the bits. So uh, the reason uh, so many of the things we use in our daily lives work is, is that uh, the bits get from one place to another. Many of those uh, happen without uh, the end users uh, having the awareness uh, of how the bits get, get across the network. Mm -hmm. And uh, speaking of bits, uh, you know, some figures say that over 95% of traffic is, uh, you know, transported over uh, fiber optic cables. Can you please explain how ITU standards uh, help to make that possible? Well, uh, ITU is responsible for many of the standards uh, with respect to, uh, to fiber optics and, and cables in particular. So G652 is a very uh, well-known ITT recommendation for the most uh, commonly deployed uh, type of uh, single-mode fiber, which carries uh, information over, uh, over fairly long distances. Uh, we're also responsible for a lot of the, um, the technology for how optical signals are carried over those networks, the WDM technologies to be able to, to maximize uh, how much information we can carry over an optical fiber. Uh, a lot of the applications are, are quite diverse, uh, much more diverse than they were back in the days when everything was carried over, over telco networks but uh, much of our technology is used today in everything um, ranging from traditional telco to more specialized applications, including um, data center interconnect, uh, mobile front hall and back hall, uh, video distribution and so forth. And speaking of fiber, uh, it seems you've also been famous for squeezing fiber-like speeds um, out of copper through your uh, GFAST standard. Can you please explain to our viewers how fast GFAST is and how are operators benefiting from this? Yes, uh, G.FAST uh, in its most uh, recent revision has just made the jump from uh, one gigabits to two gigabits per second uh, over copper, as you say. Uh, the other thing I think to be aware of, um, mostly this is directed at uh, being able to increase uh, speeds in the very last segments of the network. Uh, which are, are places where it's impractical to, uh, to replace the cable every time you want to move to a new speed. So that last uh, segment from the curb to the house, for example, or you don't want to tear open homeowner's walls in order to install new, new cable types, you try to milk as much as you can with the cable that's already there. And that's what a lot of these technologies are aimed at. Uh, it's important to note that this is not simply the GFAST access network, but a lot of our work in home networking uh, applies uh, the same kind of technologies to the ever-increasing bandwidth needs. Uh, besides increasing the speeds, we're applying these technologies to an increasing array of, uh, of media types. So it's not just the twisted pair wiring that, of course, uh, DSL was designed to run over, but we go over coaxial networks. Uh, things that were installed for TV distribution in the first place. Uh, we have, within the home networking, we have power line transmission to take advantage of, uh, of the uh, power wires in the house, and uh, uh, even uh, Cat5, Cat6 Ethernet type cables. So we're able to run over uh, many of the, the installed uh, uh, base of, of infrastructure of copper interconnectivity. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, jumping from copper to 5G, um, you know, 5G, it's a lot more than broadband on, on steroids, and s some people seem to think that this is, you know, the, the domain of, of the wireless, but that's not really the case, is it? No, it's not. Uh, in, in fact, everybody thinks the network is mobile, and, and in fact, the only thing that's really mobile are the users of the network, so we all carry our own devices wherever we go. But the only thing that's wireless is from your device to the nearest antenna. And as 5G dramatically increases the amount of bandwidth that's accessible to the average end user, because there's only so much spectrum available in the air, what that means is that the antenna has to get closer and closer to the end user in order to, to, to take maximum advantage of that spectrum. 
which means more and more infrastructure based on the kind of technologies that Study Group 15 develops is, is something that's necessary in order to, to get uh, that bandwidth out closer and closer to the end user. Uh, so uh, mobile front haul and back haul is definitely a very uh, important focus of a lot of our work uh, and uh, something we're applying study group 15 technologies to. And you know, we're here at the start of a new uh, four-year study period. Uh, what are some of the new priorities for the study group? Uh, well, it's hard to say new priorities because I, th I, I think it, it tends to be a continual uh, evolution of uh, what the technologies are and how they're applied. So. Uh, study Group 15 uh, uh, has, a, has a long history of having been responsible for, uh, for uh, many of the technologies that get uh, uh, information carried across the network over uh, particularly long distances, but also in those last segments in the access networks and home networks. I think some of the, the interesting evolution is, is that uh, uh, so much more of the traffic uh, ends up being uh, focused on uh, getting things in and out of data centers uh, and between data centers. So uh, once upon a time when the network traffic was predominantly uh, voice telephone calls or modem or fax traffic, um, that was, was one particular network model. But the, the network applications that use more of the bits are things like video. So somebody goes and watches a YouTube video, uh, uh, that, that's a lot of bits and that probably is going between an end user, uh, from a data center to an end user. Mm -hmm. Uh, so there's, uh, there's a lot of those kinds of applications. I think uh, more and more of the, uh, the topology of the networks changes, but the, the technology we use uh, to get the bits over any particular fiber route is, is, uh, is enhancement and evolution of what we've done uh, all along. Of course, our, our technologies improve uh, year over year, decade over decade, so uh, what we used to have with uh, individual signals going over individual fibers is, of course, well beyond that. So uh, we're, we're transmitting uh, data at uh, more than 100 gigabits per second per wavelength, uh, many, many wavelengths on a fiber with DWDM technologies. So the, uh, the optical modulation has, has become uh, coherent formats, uh, which, which use uh, very sophisticated modulation to get very, very high bit rates over each wavelength on a fiber. Well, Stephen, thank you very much indeed for joining us here today, and I'd like to wish you the best of luck and success with uh, your next study period. Thank you very much. Thank you.